Hey, Rick Salmon here. Thank you so much for joining me. You know, I've been to Fossil Rim Wildlife Center in Glen Rose, Texas, five times. I have also been to Africa five times, and it's really amazing the type of pictures that you can get, the type of out-of-Africa pictures you can get at Fossil Rim. So what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd put together a little slideshow to show you the kind of pictures that you can make if you go to Fossil Rim Wildlife Center. Now, in April, April 27, April 29, 2016, I'm doing the Canon EOS Destination Workshop there. I really hope you can join me because I'm going to be there. Some Canon folks are going to be there, and it's just going to be an unbelievable experience. Now, if you want information about the workshop, you can email me at ricksalmon at mac.com, and I will answer all your questions. This is a shot of me taken on the last Canon workshop, and the animals come this close. Now, you might think, hey, I could get this picture in a zoo. Well, you could. But look at this shot. I took this picture shortly after I took the other picture. This is one of my favorite giraffe pictures. Look how cute that baby giraffe is. The giraffe is, I think, about three weeks old, they told me. So you can get, really, these, these type of Africa safari pictures in Glen Rose, Texas at Fossil Rim. Now, I took this giraffe picture in Kenya. It's also one of my favorites, but I really do like this picture also. This picture, by the way, illustrates separation. Look how... The baby giraffe is separated from the mommy, and the tree is separated in the back. When it comes to composition, when it comes to composition, separation is very, very important. So if you go to Fossil Rim, my basic gear recommendations are a 100 to 400 millimeter zoom. The new Canon zoom 100 to 400 is amazing, by the way. And a 24 to 105 millimeter image stabilization lens and a speed light. Now, there are a lot of other lenses I use there, a 400 millimeter, a 70 to 200 f4, but these are the basic lens recommendations. Now, when you go, you want to pack wisely. You're going to be in a safari vehicle, just like in Africa, with other photographers. So you don't want to bring like a thousand lenses with you. <laughs> you want to pack wisely. Bring two or three lenses. That's really all you need because the animals do come relatively close. You don't, you don't need an 800 millimeter lens. So in the next few slides, I'd like to illustrate Pictures that I've taken at Fossil Rim compared to the pictures that I've taken in Africa. So the left Fossil Rim. Now this beautiful, this beautiful cheetah was photographed behind a fence. So what I did is I used a wide aperture and a long telephoto lens, the 200 millimeter lens actually, and I held it right in the opening at the fence to make the fence disappear. And the tip here is photograph at the peak of action, which is basically the yawn here. So left is Fossil Rim. And the right, of course, is uh, Kenya. So you want to shoot for the peak of action. So you want to time your shots and you want to use a high frame rate. Another tip, picture on the left, again, the cheetah behind the fence. Doesn't look like a fence, right? In a fossil rim. And the right, this guy was called a killing machine. Photographed him in Kenya because he just killed so many wildebeest today. But the tip is get down low. See eye to eye and shoot eye to eye. That way, when someone's looking at the photograph, they'll feel as though the animal's looking right at you. My next tip, process with purpose. Left fossil rim, right Africa. You want to process your pictures with purpose and create a mood, create a feeling. And that is the most important part of a photograph. It's the mood, it's the feeling. So here I took out the color from the scene. I took out some of the reality. The zebras, I mean, they, I think they have about a dozen zebras running around a fossil rim. It's pretty cool. Another tip, crop creatively. This guy was photographed in fossil rim. You want to crop creatively and you want to compose creative, creatively. You put these together, you have a term that I actually came up with, cropposition. Here's the original shot, right? I envision the end result. I envision this shot. So you really want to put together cropping and composition. So talk about process, processing with a purpose. This picture really looks like it's taken at sunset, right? Sunset in Africa on the African plains. Well, <laughs> what I did is I took these two snapshots and I, uh, I put them together and I made a composite and I added an orange gradual filter and I created, again, from these two pretty boring shots into a shot like this. So this is one of the things I teach on my workshop, creative processing. Here's the original shot, by the way, of my favorite <laughs> giraffe shot from uh, Fossil Rim. 
Talk about processing with purpose. This is an HDR shot. I took this picture between the lodge, between the lodge and the safari tents. But the tents are really fun, by the way. Uh, you feel like you're in Africa if you stay there, and they have hair dryers and hot water. But anyway, this is a Canon 5D Mark III in camera HDR. If the animals aren't moving fast, you can use, actually, if they're hardly moving at all, you could try a HDR. One tip that I like to give in wildlife photography is try to create a sense of movement. Picture at the top, actually, taken at fossil rim, has, has a greater sense of movement than the picture on the right, on the bottom right, that I took in Africa, because the leg is bent. So you want to look for, you want to look for things that are going to add a sense of movement to your pictures. Next up, focus carefully. Just because you have an autofocus camera, my friends, it doesn't mean that the camera knows where to focus. So what I did here is I placed the focusing point right on the subjects. Now, if the subject's moving, use AI servo focus. Uh, if it's not moving, uh, you could use a one shot. You know, what, what you want to do, I think, is, you know, to tell the whole story, you want to try to capture the details. So the picture on the right, you know, nice enough, but look at the detail shot on the bottom. I mean, that picture to me has impact. And, you know, that is a goal, by the way, when you go uh, when you take a picture, try to create a, a picture with impact. Also, if you get one shot, this is a good goal. Make a print. <laughs> make a print for your office. You know, if someone walks into your office and sees, and sees this dramatic black and white, they're going to go, wow, that person's a good photographer. By the way, if you come on the workshop, Canon's going to make a, a beautiful print or two for you, which is very, very cool. Now, Panning also adds a sense of action. Picture on the bottom taken in Africa, I panned. And what I did is I used a slow shutter speed to create that sense of movement. Picture in the top, you know, wildebeest, they actually have wildebeest running around in, uh, in Glenrose, Texas at Fossil Rim Wildlife Center. They, they weren't moving too fast, so I couldn't get that panning effect. But if you see them running, and I have seen them running, try to use a slow shutter speed. Another thing is you want to be aware of the background. The background can make or, or break a shot. So in Fossil Rim, picture on the left, that's where it was taken. There are fences behind this, other safari vehicles, but if you compose carefully, ask the driver, oh, just go up a little, go back a little, they can help you make the shot. Picture on the right, taken in uh, Botswana. And background help to create that uh, the sense of place, which is one thing I really try to do uh, when I'm out there photographing. And usually, wide apertures are better. And talking about the drivers, ask your drivers, definitely don't be shy. <laughs> ask your drivers to move into a good position for your shot. And when you're moving around, try not to shake the vehicle. So some other basic tips, shoot with both eyes open. Because if you do that, this is my son, Marco. Uh, when he was younger, shooting with both eyes open, you can see another. You can see if another animal is going to come into the scene to, you know, enhance your shot or maybe ruin your shot. <laughs> I love this one. Always look back for safety and for good photographs. There might be good photographs behind you. Now we're not going to get out of the safari vehicles like this on the trip. We're going to be shooting from the safety of the safari vehicles. But this is just a setup, uh, a fun shot. Now, you're going to be shooting in different settings. You always want to check your camera settings. You know, check your aperture, check your, <coughs> excuse me, check your ISO, check your white balance. Because what you want to do is you want to get the very best in-camera shot. This, by the way, is a daylight fill-in flash shot, which I also teach on the, on the workshop. So talk about getting back to the fence. What you want to do is you want to do a disappearing act, what I call a disappearing act. Uh, picture on the right, that was taken at Fossil Rim, and the picture on the left shows the chain link fence. So you want to position your lens right up on the fence and shoot at an opening and choose a wide aperture, and you can definitely that's right, do that disappearing act. This, my friends, this is one of my favorite pictures. This was taken on the last day of the workshop. We have special be we have a special behind the scene permit to get these this type of shots. I mean, look at the effect and talk about the mood and the feeling. Look at the interaction between these two beautiful cheetahs. And if you come, I hope you get a shot like that. Getting back to the daylight fill and flash, it's great. It's wonderful. Picture on the left is a daylight fill and flash shot. But it actually ruins the mood of the scene. I like the backlit or sidelit shot on the right much better. So we'll talk about that on the workshop. Now, this picture was not taken at Fossil Rim, <laughs> but it illustrates that, you know, the animals do come close. And when the animals come close, 
it looks as though the picture was taken at the zoo. So actually having the animals further away, uh, that type of picture looks more like it was taken in the wild. And, you know, coming down the end of the slide presentation, what you want to do is you want to have fun. My feeling is if you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. So this workshop is really a ton of fun. So anyway, the dates are April 27th, April 29, 2016. I really hope you can join us. And you can contact me about the workshop at ricksalmon at mac.com or check out my uh, website. Hey, my friends, I'll catch you later. And I hope I catch you at Fossil Rim.